I thought that life would end for me. At the scene, my leg was just about amputated. How can anyone survive pain that way? Hi, my name is Sharon Spencer and this is my story. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I'm a single mom. In 2006, February, I had fibroids and I had a surgery which prompted my OBGYN to send me to the doctor to get uh, my first mammogram because I was 40 years of age. I went for my first mammogram and surprisingly I found out that I had breast cancer, stage two. So I underwent chemotherapy in 2007 and uh, I had the cancer removed. I got extremely sick. I had pneumonia twice. I lost my hair and I thought that life would end for me. After the chemo, I was able to return back to my job that I was at for 22 years. I was cancer free and I've been ever since. Five years cancer free now. On July 26th of 2008, I decided to go out with some of my friends to a lounge. I came out of the lounge and was about to enter the car that my friends were in. While I was getting in the back seat of the car, a vehicle struck that car, which in turn pushed me to a double park car and pinned me against it. At the scene, my leg was just about amputated. Uh, I didn't want to go to sleep with the fear of dying, so I decided to endure the pain. There was a gentleman there that helped me on the ground, and we prayed together while I was going, waiting for the ambulance. It felt like two hours, which probably was only 20, 25 minutes. The pain was so severe, it felt like burning, a burning sensation that I've just never imagined that you can live with. You can, how can anyone survive pain that way? But I did. The ambulance came and took me to Kings County and I was in so much pain uh, that they automatically, I just, they just put, knocked me out and put me to sleep. Uh, when I, when I woke, my family and friends, my son, everyone was standing there and there was a doctor that came to me and told me that they had to fully amputate my leg above me. I refused, of course, being devastated. So what I did, they had to put me back to sleep. They put me to sleep for several hours and when I woke up again, there was a nurse that came to me and said, if we do not fully amputate your leg, you will die. So I didn't have much of a choice. I went into surgery and when I came out, I no longer had my leg that I had for 42 years of my life. I was devastated, as you can imagine. Uh, but I'm a strong person in my family's eyes. So I didn't cry. I didn't want to talk about it. Uh, because I wanted to be the strength for my mom and my son. So I just grinned and bared it. My life totally changed. How I take a bath, how I, uh, in the morning, uh, how I dress, uh, everything changed. Just, just, I miss walking to the store. I miss getting up and just being able to take a short walk around the area or to the bathroom at night. My life has totally changed. Being an amputee totally changes your whole entire life. How you do things. You have to learn how to walk again. You have to learn how to get dressed a different way. Everything is totally different. I was withdrawn. I didn't want to do things with my friends anymore. I didn't want to go out. I wasn't embarrassed about what happened to me because this is an accident and accidents happen. But as a woman, I, I was so depressed about losing my leg, I didn't even think that I can go on anymore. Losing a limb is extremely painful, 
But I believe in my circumstance, it's more mental than it is physical. You can get from point A to point B with the prosthetic, but mentally you never forget what happened to you. You relive it over and over again in your mind, in your sleep, in your dreams, and your everyday life changes. One day I got so frustrated, I went to a funeral with my mom, and I had on a very thin spaghetti jumpsuit, black. And I remember going up in the front of the funeral parlor and coming back and my mom whispered to me, and this was when I, this was the beginning of my am losing my leg. So I wasn't really familiar with, you know, too, like too many things that associated with the prosthetic. My mom said to me, Sharon, come here. I don't think you should wear that material anymore because I see everything. When you wear that material, you have to wear something thicker. I immediately just went into depression mode and I got home and I said to myself, I have to figure out a way to be able to still wear thin materials and just regular clothing and just look normal. I've met a lot of other amputees and a lot of nice friends and we do things together. We go on trips and conferences and while attending several conferences, I've met so many different women and men, different nationalities, and they've all had the same complaint. They no longer have the desire to dress up or shop because of losing their leg. And it's not necessarily the amputation that depresses them, but it's the fear of the unwanted attention that this prosthetic leg brings when you're trying to dress up. Because looking, the whole thing is your self-esteem. You lose part of your leg, that's part of your self-esteem, especially for women. So I decided for me to better myself and my self-esteem because I always took pride in the way I looked, that I was going to do something. I wasn't gonna just take it, I was gonna do something to fight the way I, I, I wanna look, I wanna look just like everybody else. When you look good, you feel good. When someone gives you a compliment and says to you, oh, you look nice today, you feel better. Even if you, no one ever compliments you and you feel in your mind that you look good, that's all really that's, that matters. I have an excellent prosthesis at Orthopedic Arts, Stephen Muncherian. I continued to give him a hard time and I kept asking him if there was anything that would disguise the prosthetic so going to him for several years now, he kept saying to me, there's nothing to disguise it. You just have to wear bigger clothes, sweatpants, or things to camouflage it. And I absolutely refused because that's not me. I've always loved fashion and I love to shop. I came up with the camouflage pad and I call it the camo pad for short. It is padded and it has a pocket on the inside and I had put uh, some kind of foam in the pocket area and the Velcro, which I attached to my prosthetic and had a seamstress sew on the other Velcro to the camera pad. So putting the camera pad against the hard surface of the prosthetic and then I would put on what, one, what someone would refer to as a body girdle would totally change the appearance in my clothing. It's very comfortable, it's durable, it's washable. Once you take the, the uh, foam out, you can wash it. I can reattach it when I go to my prosthetic for fittings. I can take it off, I can put it back on. I think it's unique because I just can't believe in this day and age, and as long as prosthetics are, have been in, in existence, there's nothing to camouflage your prosthetic. I mean, if you wanna go to a wedding and you wanna wear thin material as a woman, you still wanna feel somewhat sexy. It's extremely comfortable. You don't feel it at all because it's not attached to you, it's attached to the prosthetic. I can still shop. Go to, go to the mall, still go out with my friends and not have the unwanted attention and the questions of what that is. What is that? 
I'm absolutely no longer limited to the clothes that I buy. My vision is that this product will help people all over the world because there's amputees everywhere. This amputee world is so much bigger than I imagined. Before I lost my leg, I knew nothing, absolutely nothing about amputees. I, I didn't even know anyone who owned a prosthetic leg. Now I see this is such a whole big world that I'm in. I'm just so surprised. And I do want to help not only myself, but millions of other people. And I think this would change the self-esteem of young women. I'm targeting women from ages 14 to 55, men also, but mainly women because women are more visual and they like to shop and they like to dress up and they like to look pretty. Like my mom said to me, don't ever wear that material again. Now she can't say that to me anymore. <laughs> she can't tell me that anymore because I still wear the same material that I used to wear.